<laughs> and and we, we, Chris and I, we talked about names before, but we hadn't actually fixed on any, anything definite. But when Anna was born, on her forehead, in invisible ink that only Chris could see, she was <laughs> Anna Louise. So she just looked at her and said, Anna Louise. <laughs> and that was how Anna came by her name. No, I would have called Sam Jim Jack. I would have called Jim. <laughs> so bringing those memories back now, it's as if those last 31 years have sort of gone by in a flash, but of course they haven't. 18 months later, along came Rachel, my beautiful daughter Rachel. Yeah. <laughs> and three years after that, Sam arrived. Yeah. <laughs> and of course, like all brothers and sisters, they argued at times, and probably still do. But the love that binds them together, which I've seen... <laughs> Very, you know, very overtly today is along with cousin Tom. <laughs> what a guy! It's one, it's one of the great pleasures in our lives. As a parent, you watch your children go and gradually you become more independent of you. They learn to, you know, and Anna learnt to, to roll over, to sit up, to, crawl, <laughs> to walk, to fall down the stairs. Yeah, she screamed and cried when she was left at playgroup. She touched your hand when you first took her to school. <coughs> and then a few years later, wouldn't be seen at the school gates with you if she returned embarrassed. There, there were things she was good at. Who could ever forget Anna's first stunning performance as the Angel Gabriel? At the and thanks to Chrissy's willingness to let them splash paint all over the house and draw on the walls, she was very good at art. In fact, I've got an example of her art. Oh, yeah. oh. oh dear. Oh, at least I level one. <laughs> at least I level one. That's not my answer! I no, I'd just like to say, this, I got angry with you. You did not hear all these years, I've resisted all offers for it, <laughs> and I think it's time it came home. But I want you all to have a chance to appreciate it, so I'll pass it round to you to have a look. Uh, very nice. <laughs> and she consumed books. There was other things that she was not so good at. I remember Chris and I watching her at a gymnastics class. <laughs> And there was, a, there was a line of kids waiting to do whatever it is they were doing, jumping over a horse or some such thing. And, and as the queue moved forward, Anna would sort of just shuffle back at the time, so she would never get to the front, never have to do it. It took ages for Anna to learn to ride a bike, and I, I've never ever managed to get her to the top of a mountain. But there were, you know, it wasn't all bad things. I remember sw swimming way out to sea one day in, in, when we were on holiday in Spain, and and turning around to find that Anna had swum out with me. And years later, when Anna decided to sort of do some keep fit, she and Jane Fonda wore holes in my very expensive handmade Persian rug. Was that at least from neighbours? Oh, I'm sorry. That makes such a difference. <laughs> she was very determined. And Anna's character was formed at a very early age, and determination, and I don't mean stubbornness, because today is Anna's wedding day, so <laughs> Um, was there from a very early age. I remember an argument she had with Chris. I, I'm sure there were arguments we had with me, but I can't remember any of them. Well, it was one of those arguments that sort of festered and went on, and eventually Chris went to Anna. I think she was probably about eight or nine, and said, "Look, look, Anna, this is ridiculous. You know, I'm prepared to apologise if you are." And Anna said, "You may feel the need to apologise, but I certainly do." <laughs> I said I wouldn't mention, I promised I wouldn't mention ironing. <laughs> but I must mention ironing Nana, who is Anna's great-grandmother, sadly not here with us today, um, who had the ability to see into the future. And she actually predicted long before Anna was born that Anna would be a girl and the precise date of her birth. 
And armed with this knowledge, one day when I happened to pick up a hitchhiker who turned out to be an astrologer, I asked for some you know, information about uh, Anna. And uh, some of you may know that I now live in Totnes, which is the new age capital of Britain, <laughs> twinned with Narnia. <laughs> Uh, but I don't believe any of this nonsense, but nonetheless, I was, I was watching to see how Anna's character and, would develop. And this, this astrological prediction said, Anna will be a great traveller. Or your unborn daughter will be a great traveller. Well, she always hated travelling. No, because you only took us to white Don't, not quite, quite. <laughs> She always hated travelling with me. And I think oh, what I... What? <laughs> What I've discovered is that the stars that Anna likes are not the ones you can see from the tent, but the ones that come after the name of a hotel. <laughs> Mark has discovered this and therefore successfully got up to the top of Table Mountain, whereas I failed miserably with Helvelling and Snowden. Despite illness, Anna did really well at GCSEs, brilliantly at A-levels, and more importantly, made really good strong friends, and it's lovely to see so many of them here today. The next few years saw a degree, a brief career in journalism. Not surprising that it was brief, because she once told me that she wouldn't mind being a journalist as long as she didn't have to talk to people. <laughs> so she'd probably make quite a good journalist in many newspapers these days. <laughs> then she went back to Sussex for a master's, various jobs, lots of hard work, hard work, and then she met Mark. I, I like Mark. <laughs> <laughs> He's a lovely bloke, and it, there's no occasion when it's more important to be able to say that to, about someone than at your daughter's wedding. <laughs> He's a bit slow on the assault course, as we discovered <laughs> on the state weekend. But, you know, some things you can forgive. And Chris and Rachel and Sam and I are very pleased to welcome him into our family. And thank you to Sue and John for raising such a fine son. Aww. There's one thing I want to get clear right now, before Mark's writing career takes off. When he eventually produces a script about wounded zombie buffaloes, <laughs> it was, it was my idea. <laughs> <laughs> These days, nobody bats an eyelid if you don't get married, you live together, you have children. You're not under any pressure to do that by the world, certainly not from us. So the fact that they decided to get married, I think, says something special about their relationship. And Chris and I and everyone here wish you every success in all three of your lives, because I think the best couples actually have three lives, one for him, one for her, and one for you, two of you together. I talked about growing independence, and I think the day that Anna and Mark have organised here today is an example of that growing independence. And it's, you know, it's a wonderful wedding, what a wedding they've organised. Anna, we're so proud of you. And, well, I think I've said enough before I start behaving like a old sheep. Before I start behaving like a tennis player who's just lost a match. <laughs> Anna and Mark, we live you, we love you. Love we wish you every happiness. And I'd like to ask everybody to stand and join me in the toast. We're all standing. Everyone's standing. Everyone's standing. To Anna and Mark. <laughs>